Hello and welcome to the second part uh, of the lecture of Pharmacology 102, Understanding How Drugs Work. So we're going to talk about metabolism of drugs and we've talked about that. Uh, basically how drugs are metabolized in our body is via biochemical reactions and these reactions are going to be carried out by enzymes. So what are enzymes? Enzymes are basically proteins within our body um, that catalyze or facilitate these biochemical reactions. They're often referred to as nature's powerhouses. So you see here, when you take in glucose, uh, this is a food or carbohydrates that you digest. Uh, glucose is not going to be stored in the liver in the form of glucose. Glucose is going to be stored in the form of glycogen. So in order to convert glucose to glycogen, it has to undergo a series of biochemical reactions and these reactions are going to be performed by enzymes. For example, glucose is going to be converted to glucose 6-phosphate by an enzyme that's called hexokinase. So how do these reactions actually happen? So these are the three key terms that you need to be familiar with. So basically enzyme is a protein and it has what's known as an active site. This active site can be a molecular cleft on the enzyme and this is where your substrate is going to come, come in and bind. So what is a substrate? Substrate is another term that you need to be aware of. It's basically a substance on which the enzyme is going to act. And in our case, this is going to be a drug. And then the enzyme with its active site where the substrate is going to bind here. Uh, you see that the shapes sort of fit together and this is so that you can easily see where it's going to go. They're going to bind together and the way that they bind is via different chemical bonds. These are hydrogen bonds or van der Waals interactions. You probably remember them from basic inorganic chemistry. When these two bind together, they're going to form what's known as an enzyme and substrate complex. And this is where the reaction is going to occur. This is where the magic happens. So then as soon as the reaction is carried out, and this can be any reaction uh, depending on the substrate on the enzyme and the function that it performs. For example, here the reaction is O-dealkylation. Like I mentioned, the alkyl group is going to be removed. So reaction is going to happen, and then you have the enzyme, and it's still unchanged. It looks exactly the same nothing happened to the enzyme, it's good to go, it can just uh, catalyze a hundred of the same identical reactions. But what's changed is the original substrate. It's now known as a product, or a metabolite is another name for it. And this is basically the outcome of the reaction that the enzyme catalyzed. So here, codeine is going to be the substrate, O-dealkylation is a reaction that's carried out by the enzyme, and the product or metabolized of codeine is another drug known as morphine. So another metabolism reaction. So then what happens to morphine? So in this reaction, morphine is going to be metabolized to morphine 3-glucuronide or morphine 6-glucuronide. This is done via a reaction called glucuronidation. But here, morphine was the product of the reaction or metabolite and in this case morphine is actually the substrate of the reaction and morphine 3-glucuronide and morphine 6-glucuronide these are the metabolites. And lastly we're going to talk about the final uh, stage of ADME and this is going to be drug elimination. So how are drugs actually eliminated from our body? Well, drugs are going to be uh, excreted from our body via different organs. So three of the major organs of excretion are basically going to be kidney, liver, and lungs. So kidneys, these are major organ of excretion. This is when we talk about when we say drugs undergo renal metabolism. So what do kidneys actually do? Well, in the most basic sense, kidneys are basically like filtering machines. And what they do is they're going to filter blood, they're going to reabsorb the fluid, and they're going to excrete the waste products. So the amount of fluid filtered every day 
is astonishing. It's phenomenal. It's 170 liters per day. But you know that you don't actually pee out 170 liters per day. Otherwise, you would never leave the bathroom. So what happens to the rest of the uh, fluid? The amount of urine that you uh, excrete every day is about 1 to 2 liters. Well, the rest of the fluid uh, is going to be reabsorbed by the kidneys. And what happens to the drugs? The drugs are going to be eliminated via urine and you have to understand that not only they can be eliminated but some of them can also be reabsorbed. What is that going to be dependent on? This is going to be dependent on the intrinsic properties of the drug, their pKa and also on the acidity of the urine. So then liver, this is our another organ that's involved in the drug excretion and remember that liver is going to secrete the substance known as bile. So drugs can be eliminated via biliary excretion. Um, you remember we talked about the first pass effect of the drugs. So this is one of the ways that drugs undergo first pass metabolism. And then lastly, lungs are the final organ of excretion. And how do lungs actually eliminate Drugs. drugs are going to be eliminated via expired air. And this is a very simple concept. This is the exact same concept behind uh, when a police officer pulls you out, pulls you and while you're driving and they would like for you to take a breath test to see if they can try and detect alcohol on your breath. This is why they're doing it because when alcohol is metabolized, some of it is going to be eliminated via the air that you expire so they can actually detect those metabolites and they can tell the concentration of alcohol in your body and this is the exact same concept behind undergoing a urine drug test so let's say you get a new amazing job and you show up for the first day of work and they would like for you to take a drug test what are they actually looking for <laughs> well they're looking for you eliminating or excreting those drugs uh, that are suspected that you could be taken. And what are the drugs that they're usually testing for? So these are some of the drugs that they're usually testing for, but you see that the way the drugs are metabolized, they excrete it, usually takes some time for them to be excreted. So for example, you know, if you've done cocaine a couple days ago, they're going to be able to detect cocaine metabolites in your urine for up to four days. So if you want additional resources on clinical pharmacokinetics, this is a wonderful book by my professor that personally taught classes to me, and he is a really uh, well-distinguished individual in the um, arena of clinical pharmacokinetics. So this is a fantastic book that I recommend you can read. And here are some references. Thank you so much, and we'll continue further with the next lecture.